So when Abe Hewitt would come down here, uh, we would take and design saddles. We'd take these saw butts like this, and we would make the bars. And then we would take the bars, and we would fit it on the mules, and then we would just we would then put them to work. We'd make the whole saddle. So what we ended up doing, you can see how this pack saddle is here. The bars move, okay? So thinner, fat, fatter, you think? And then we can make, we can That's make, cool. yeah? That's cool. We can make the arches so I can make the, the, the saddle narrower or wider. So we started figuring out what was best for the animal. So I would take, this mule's name was Marvel, and I would put the saddle on Marvel, and I would adjust it to a certain spot. I'd write it down, talk about it. We'd go pack freight someplace, and then I would look at his back, and I would look at hot spots, uh, dry spots, wet spots, things like that. Uh, I would see how the animal would move. Just believe me, the dry spots and the wet spots don't mean a whole lot compared to the movement. When you start spending enough time on these things, you start looking at these mules, and you, can, you understand what's right and what's wrong, okay? So it wasn't so much a real wet back, real cold back, uh, uh, real dry spots and this sort of thing is how did the mule move? How did he move going in? How did he move coming out? And so we kept making mental notes of that. We talked to my packers and cowboys. So we started seeing that if we took my arches, these, and we made them smaller so that when the animal, when it sets on the animal's back, notice it can be flat or I can have it narrower. Okay, so we started saying, okay, what really worked on the mule the best? I have my spine. We found that taking the spine, here's the spine right here, and we took the bars, which is this bar here and this bar here, and we moved them out sometimes two inches from the spine, so we'd have the spine. And uh, let me take this bar over here like this. You move old Fluffy around here a little bit where everybody can kind of see it. Uh, so if you all want to come over this way here, the bars are going to be on the left-hand side. Okay, now here we have the spine, all right? And when you have the spine, if you notice right here, there's a high spot. Matter of fact, you can even see a few hairs. That's a fat pocket. Come over here and feel this. You can kind of see it too. See that high spot right there? Yeah. Okay. You see that fat pocket? Mm -hmm. Y'all see that fat mm -hmm. pocket right there? Mm -hmm. You see the few little white hairs in there mm -hmm. too as well? You see that? Yeah, that's a fat pocket. It runs along the crest of the neck. It runs along the crest of the neck. Top of the ribs. Dock of the tail. When we go wider, what are we on? The fat pocket. Yeah. That fat pocket, I've actually kicked out ribs and had them walking crippled because of the pressure from the fat pocket. So I had my tree clear down to here, my bars clear down to here like you would do on a full quarter horse tree. And I'm right on top of that fat pocket. And I couldn't understand how at first he was striding nice, then he started shortening the stride. Back was wet, y'all. Okay, back was wet, but the mule started shortening the stride because I was on top of that fat pocket right there. Okay, so then when I took and moved my bar up to here, I'm up above my fat pocket. Here's my spine. Now take, come over here and look. You're going to see that I'm about an inch from the spine to my bar. Take a, go ahead and take a good close look. Get everybody get a good look at it. I get roughly about an inch in there. If I'm there, I want you to notice how my bar is sitting on the mule's back. All right? Now, this is the scapula. You see the white hairs here? Okay? White hairs tells me that this is an, a scald, an overheating. It also tells me 
where my cinch is the tightest. All right? So you see the white hairs here. And if I put my bar here like this, I want you to notice how I can take and rub my hand underneath here. Put your hand here and how I can rub my hand underneath here like this. The only difference between semi-quarter horse, narrow, and, and full quarter horse is wider. That's the only difference between the two that carry the same bar. So you go into any tax store, any saddle company, the main guideline that these saddle companies use is quarter horse, y'all. Mm -hmm. Everybody says, well, how can your one saddle fit all these mules? Don't you understand that your horse saddles only have one saddle, one tree? Semi-quarter horse or full-quarter horse, period. I don't care what maker that there is. They're all semi-quarter horse or quarter horse. Now, we're starting to get into the, the gated, which really is not a whole lot of difference in it. And we're starting to get into the um, Arab type, so a little narrower. But still, a bar is a bar, all right? So now we take the horse bar and we put it on there. You see it? I can't get my hand in there. What do you think caused this problem? This bar going into there. Don't see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if we take and tighten up the cinch on it, that makes it worse. Makes it worse. Look at the back of the saddle. So, so now here's my rider. Y'all see the picture? Mm -hmm. All right. Your mule that you were looking at. All right. Everybody says, man, look at him go through them rocks. Look at that cowboy, just nice and smooth and easy. I'm looking at, what kind of damage am I doing to that mule? That's what I'm looking at. And, and look, he may be a nice mule on these mountains and stuff, may do a good job. How long has he been ridden in that semi-quarter horse bars? And what kind of damage has he done to him? You see, therein lies the problem. Little story. I had a guy call me from Michigan. Not us. <laughs> uh, somebody else. He just spent $12,000 for the mule. $3,000 for the saddle, custom made for that mule. So boy, now we got some picture, don't we? Got a gated mule, and in the, in the video, YouTube, here's this lady riding this mule. Was she really riding? I was not very happy with that either. Anyway, she's riding, and this mule just gated going along, you know? She's got the saddle sitting on top of the scapula, and it's doing that the whole time. You can see her butt coming up in the back, and I can just imagine what was happening to that mule. He sent me that video. Long story short, okay, now he's got $15,000 in this mule. He calls me up, he says, Steve, my mule's tripping. He says, should I take it to the farrier? And I said, uh, well, that's a possibility. I said, how often do you shoe him? Oh, this mule's never had shoes. Eh, wrong answer. If they don't have shoes, you've got a problem, and we'll talk about feet later, okay? So I said, uh, send me a picture of the mule tapped up. He said, I'll also send you a picture of the mule being rode. And here's the saddle, sitting on top of the scapula, like this. And every time it comes up, you know, and this mule was just, you could just see him ducking his head, getting away. That mule coming off that hill, ducked his head four times, trying to get away from the pressure of that saddle, okay? So, long story short, I said, I said the, the shoulder's out, he's, he's, he's short on his left side, and he's short on his right hip. He said, really? I said, yeah, I've watched him. I said, have your chiropractor work on him. Don't tell him I told you, but see what happens. So the guy started watching the mule going around. He says, boy, that mule's sure dropping his head on the left side, and that right hip sure dropping down. So uh, he, he straightened his hip, straightened his shoulder. About four uh, times later, the mule started walking straight, you know. And this guy said to him, he says, I talked to a guy with a phone. He watched him on the, on the, on the, on the uh, YouTube and told, told me where the two problems was. He said, the guy hit it right on the money. And it wasn't the shoeing, it was the way the saddle was set up, you know, and the guy was using the crouper, okay? And so he had problems there. So long story short, he's now got $3,000 in vet bills and chiropractic bills and shoeing bills because his heels were contracted, okay? Now I'll talk about feet here in a minute. And so now he's got uh, $18,000 in the mule, all right? He goes and spends $2,500 and buy tack from me. Now he's got $27,000 in this mule, right? Okay. And, uh, and he had the veterinarian. I said, have your veterinarian, have your chiropractor watch that mule move now with my saddle on it. He calls me back almost immediately. He said, I got both these guys here. They said, wow, you know, 
it really made a difference. You see how the meal strided and this sort of thing. So not to pat myself on the back, y'all, but I just want you to understand, you know, that there's a major difference in where these saddles are sitting. There's a major difference when you see them on video. I tell people all the time, you're looking at a mule, call me. Send me a picture and let me look at it for you. Then you make your decision before you go into all these, you know, horror stories, you know. At Bishop, when they were selling mules there left and right, had a big oh, deal yeah, of selling mules, you know. Bishop, California, mm -hmm. they, had, they used to have a big sale ring and mm -hmm. sold them. There was an 80% send back because the mules weren't like they were supposed to have been, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, when I was there at Bishop, I'd say, tell the guy that you want me to come and look at his mule. And if he wants me to come and look at it, I'll go do it. They'd never come back and said, this mule won't fit you. Because they knew that I was going to tell them the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. So y'all seen the horse bar, right? Yeah. Okay. This is semi-quarter horse bars. This is not a mule bar. This is Steve's bar. <laughs> I don't want you to get it mixed up and say, oh, it's got a mule saddle. It's got mule bars in it. When I first started going to Bishop and I took my saddles to sell, Star Milling was my sponsor there. Put over ten grand into that sponsorship there, you know. And boy, the other saddle companies, this one, was not happy about Steve being there. It was another story. So, I, I wrote an article, and I said, anybody that brings me a mule that my tree doesn't fit, I'll pay to have a saddle made for them. Pay to have a saddle made. Couldn't find anybody. You know, we, we went from, from tree to tree to tree. At that time, nobody was saying mule trees or mule saddles. We would just saddle them up with blankets and pads and putting our, our semi-quarter horse tri saddles on there. So, I took my bars, and I showed them. Okay? Now, you all see the bar sitting on the mule's back. All right, now look, when you tighten the back cinch, do you see the front of that bar come up? Okay, when you tighten the front cinch, what happens? Back comes up. Back comes up, and now what? I'm into the scapula, all right? Now, watch the scapula, and watch this area here. See the little white spots? Can you all see the little yeah. salt and pepper mm -hmm. white spots in there, all right? Now watch this. Watch the scapula. Down, up. Down, up. Watch this area. Look at it move. Let me pull in here. Look at that area move. You see that area moving? Mm -hmm. Look at that area move. All right? So I take, let's just take my, my bar, and I tighten the front cinch only. Guess what I just done to that area? I just restricted it. That area has to move, y'all. It has to move. And if it don't move, it's restricting it. Where do you usually see white spots and dry spots? Right there. Mm -hmm. It's the saddle's fault. No, no. It's the way you put the saddle on and the way you rigged it up. Watch. This goes here. It's set in there now. I tighten the back cinch. It comes up off the mule's scapula. You see that? Now this isn't even, doesn't even have the skirting or the padding or the, or the saddle pad yet. So you can imagine how much better it's going to be. Here's the problem. You tighten up that front cinch, what are you going to have? Oh, Steve, it rocks. Well, yeah, it rocks. You've got a fat pocket, a high spot there. I can't take that thing down. It's going to rock on that. So you don't take a saddle and put it like this and say, oh, it rocks. No, put your hand here on my saddle. Watch it come up off of the pressure off of this area. Look, you can run your hand in there. So I've got this much of the tree helping this mule out. You don't want help there. Do you all see that? Does that make sense to you? Does everybody see it? Yes. Okay. Everybody says, well, it's not fitting all the way across. Yeah. That's right. It's fitting where it has to be, where this area stays stable. Okay. Here's the fat pocket across here. Okay, that fat pocket right there, when you take and you put this saddle on here and you cinch it down, what are you pushing against? You see that thing? How uncomfortable is that? 